hi guys welcome to my channel so today i'm going to be showing you how i made these jamaican beef patties now it's been a year since i've been able to enjoy a jamaican beef patty because i don't know any place that sell gluten-free jamaican beef patties but i managed to come up with the formula of how to make it and i will be sharing it with you today so let's get started first off we're going to start off making some gluten-free breadcrumbs now i never knew that putting breadcrumbs was a thing in jamaican patties but here we are and i'm going to be showing you how to make some breadcrumbs in less than 20 minutes so what you want to do is to break up your gluten-free bread into pieces now i would suggest that you use the type of gluten-free bread that no one wants to eat the gluten-free bread that's ready to go in the bin that's the best gluten-free bread that you can use so i'm just breaking it up into small pieces I'm using two types of breads for this recipe, some sweet brioche and some bagel. Now, it doesn't matter what type of gluten-free bread you use, just as long as it's gluten-free. But please do not feel the need to go out and buy a new loaf of bread. It's not necessary. Unless you don't have any bread in your house, fair enough. But work with what you have. Once your bread is broken into pieces like this, you want to place the tray in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes until your bread becomes crispy and dry. This is what my gluten-free bread looks like out of the oven. As you can see, it's dry, dry AF. And that is what you want. You want your bread pieces to be dry. You wanna be able to pick up one of those bread pieces and crumble it between your two fingers. If this does not happen, you need to put those bread pieces back in the oven for a little bit longer until it gains that crisp. You don't want any moisture in these pieces of bread that you've broken up. Now, what you want to do is to put your dry pieces of bread into a food processor. Now, I know what I heard, but did you hear that? Did you hear the way how those bread pieces hit my food processor? Now that's how you know you're on the right track to making some great gluten-free breadcrumbs. Now if you do not have a food processor, do not fear because I am here. <laughs> no, seriously. So all you need to do if you don't have a food processor is put your pieces of gluten-free bread that are dry into a food bag, seal it, get a rolling pin and bash that food bag until those gluten-free pieces of bread turn into breadcrumbs. Now that everything is in my food processor, I'm going to be posting my breadcrumbs until it breaks down into a consistency that I'm happy with. After less than two minutes of posting my breadcrumbs, this is what it looks like. Your breadcrumbs need to be on the fine side. They need to look like a crumbled up digestive biscuit. Now we're going to move on to the filling. I've put my lean minced beef into a bowl and I'm going to season it with beef seasoning, all-purpose seasoning, garlic powder, salt, white pepper, ginger powder and adobo. For this part, you want to use your hands to combine the dry seasoning and mince together. Now I know someone is going to ask in the comment section, can I use regular minced beef? And the answer is no. You don't want to do that because regular minced beef has a higher fat content and we don't want the filling to boil and seep through the pastry. Once the meat is well seasoned, cover it and leave it to marinate while we work on the wet seasoning and pastry. For the wet seasoning, I'm using my food processor to chop down white onion, thyme, ginger, scotch bonnet and spring onions. If you don't have a food processor, you can just grate these ingredients into a bowl. Now, I did forget to put garlic, but I've already used garlic powder in the seasoning, so it should be fine. But you can add one to two cloves of garlic. Here's the moment you've all been waiting for, the pastry part. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to cheat. 
because I've yet to come up with a good gluten-free pastry formula. When that day comes, I'll let you know. Today, I will be using Just Roll Gluten-Free Puff Pastry Sheet. First off, we need to change the plain puff pastry sheet into the bright yellow colour we know Jamaican patties to be. I'm using two gluten-free puff pastry sheets because one sheet is not enough for the amount of patties I want to make. Once you've put your gluten-free puff pastry sheet or sheets into a bowl, you want to knead it into one big dough. Now I made the mistake of putting the curry powder and turmeric mix on the pastry dough, then kneading it into one big ball. I don't want you to make the same mistake. So the best thing to do is once you've molded the pastry sheets together, split the pastry into two to three pieces, then add some of the curry powder and turmeric mix to the individual pieces. As you can see, it's so much more easier working with sections of the dough. Now I'm not overworking my hands and the turmeric and curry powder mixture can be evenly distributed. Once all the pieces of dough are yellow, I'm going to knead them together into one big dough. Also, feel free to add more curry powder and turmeric if the pastry is not yellow enough for you. I don't want the pastry to stain or stick to my surface so I will be rolling the pastry on a sheet of parchment paper as well as dusting the parchment paper and rolling pin with some plain gluten free flour. I've split the pastry dough into two pieces to make this process easier. To each piece of dough I'm going to add some butter. This is optional, but I want the end result of the pastry to be buttery and flaky. What you want to do is knead the butter into the pastry until it becomes one, and then lightly dust the top of the pastry dough before rolling it out. The 
The parchment paper really helps to maneuver the pastry around. Due to the lack of gluten in this pastry, you cannot flip and turn the pastry on itself without it easily breaking. So just be careful how you handle it. Now, I'm sure you know how to use a rolling pin, but what I like to do is to throw the pastry back on itself a couple of times before rolling it out to my desired thickness to create layers in the pastry. Once you're satisfied with the thickness of your pastry, get a saucer, place it on top of the pastry and cut around it with a pizza cutter or a knife. You want to repeat this step until you have little to no pastry left. Right, I'm running out of pastry to make standard size patties, but that's okay. With the scraps of pastries, I'm going to roll it out and use a mug to make smaller circle shapes to make mini patties. These mini patties are great for kids or for parties. This is the end result of my patty pastry. I'm quite proud if I don't say so myself. I just lightly dusted each patty case with gluten-free flour before laying them down on parchment paper. If you're someone who has children, always has guests over, or you're that person that always gets asked to bring something to gatherings, I would suggest that you pre-make a couple of batches of these patty pastry cases and keep them in your freezer. That way you just have to think about making your filling and you can present something delicious without having to spend hours in the kitchen. But today we are going to be spending some time in the kitchen. So what you want to do is place these patty cases in the fridge to allow the dough to firm up for about 30 to 40 minutes. In the meantime, let's work on the filling. To a hot pan, I'm going to add my seasoned mince. I'm going to fry my mince for about five to six minutes. When frying your mince, you want to make sure that you stir the mince continuously and break up any clumps you see forming. After five to six minutes of frying your mince, it should look something like this. At this point, I'm going to add my wet seasoning I blended up earlier.
you want to stir this into the mince and let it cook for another two to three minutes. Now that two to three minutes has passed, I'm going to add my browning sauce to give the beef filling that rich dark colour. Some people do use soya sauce to get this colour, but this is a gluten free channel so that's a no no. Although there are gluten free soya sauces out there in the market, it won't give you that rich dark colour, it would just make the beef filling salty. If you find your mints drying up like this, add some water to loosen it up a bit. I'm going to add about half a cup of water and then just let that simmer for one to two minutes before adding my breadcrumbs. By doing this, it will add moisture back into the mints. Once the breadcrumbs have been mixed into the mince and you can no longer see them, turn off your heat and set your pan aside and let the mince cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now that my mince has cooled down a bit, I'm going to place one of the patty pastry cases on some parchment paper. I will be adding two to three tablespoons of beef filling to the centre of the pastry. Now I'm going to fold the pastry over to create a half moon shape and seal the edges with a fork. You want to lightly press and drag the fork towards you to create those crimped patty edges. I'm going to repeat this step for all of my patty cases. Here are some of my completed beef patties. At this point, you can whisk an egg with some milk and brush the tops of the patties to give it some shine. But I'm just going to put my patty straight in the oven at 200 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Here you have it, a gluten-free Jamaican beef patty. I never thought I'd see the day. I know being gluten-free can be challenging, especially if you're new to this journey, but it's okay. If you have any dishes that you would like for me to turn into a gluten-free dish, then let me know in the comment section below. I have listed all the ingredients in the description bar below. And please do not forget to comment, like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.